Hey, good morning, everybody. Good to join you on this fine day. Uh, we are on Friday. Uh, it's uh, a beautiful, cool Friday morning, and hope our power up does find you well, no matter when, how, or where you're watching from. I would encourage you. We are just a couple minutes later than normal, so I had some setup, had to get uh, squared away here, so it kind of delayed us a little bit. And for that, I do apologize. But we're here, and so if you're watching, let's hit that share button really quick so that people know we're on, even though we are just a couple minutes late, uh, but good to be on with you. We're going to be in Romans chapter number 12, Romans chapter number 12, and so please join me there in your uh, copy of the Word of God, and we'll get started here in just a moment. Let me remind you about the weekend as you're getting on. Uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow. We've got a wedding at, uh, here at the church tomorrow. Hope to see you then. Noon, uh, noon o'clock is the time for that. Uh, and excited uh, for the wedding there. And then we have our revival services beginning on Sunday. And uh, we uh, would encourage you to be in prayer for them uh, and then be here uh, each service as well. Uh, and uh, you will be blessed, I am sure. You'll be encouraged in the Lord, I am sure. We had a great time last night praying for revival and praying that God would work in our hearts as we had our cottage prayer meeting last night. Uh, and so uh, let's continue to pray for, uh, for that and let's commit to being here. All right, here we go. Romans chapter number 12 as we continue. Once again, sorry we're a little bit late today. Uh, setup took just a little bit longer uh, here this morning. All right, here we go, verse number 11. So Romans 12 uh, and verse number 11. Uh, the Bible says, not slothful in business, okay? Fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. We began looking at these uh, practical uh, ways in which we can exemplify and show Jesus Christ. Uh, we noted just a few verses before, as the scriptures talked about the uh, really the gifts uh, uh, that believers have. Uh, and here we see the practical application of many of those gifts as we seek to live for Jesus Christ. And so, first of all, verse number 11, we see, and I'm not going to backtrack here today, but we see not slothful in business. Hey, hey, being diligent in our calling, being diligent in our work, uh, and having that that good spirit, that good attitude uh, as we consider uh, our testimony in the workplace, yes, but also as we do work uh, for the Lord, uh, also as we do work uh, in, in the church, obviously, but also in the home. And so we want to have that, that diligent spirit, not being slothful in business, but rather uh, having having that diligent spirit, that 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 diligent work ethic. Okay, uh, and then it says fervent in spirit. Um, kind of when when my mind considers up being fervent in spirit, there's a couple of negatives that come up in my mind. As I think of that word fervency, the negative or the opposite of that, I think would be would be maybe lazy, uh, maybe a happy go lucky spirit, uh, rather than than. Uh, than living life on purpose uh, rather than being purposeful in our spirit and in our desires. And so uh, let me just encourage you to be fervent in spirit. Uh, and then, uh, uh, and let's, let's spiritualize this. Obviously, we want to do that uh, as we consider our fervency in spirit. Uh, live, live the Christian life on purpose. Uh, too, too many... Uh, too many Christians, uh, uh, man, we're, we're, we're living this Christian life by the seat of our pants, and, and we wonder why sometimes that maybe our, our world's falling apart. We wonder why sometimes, why, uh, why we've got so much drama, you know, those types of things in our life. And I'm not saying that difficulties won't happen, but, but we need to be living this Christian life on purpose. We need to be in the Word of God. We need to be in the house of God. We need to allow God to work in our life, in our hearts. We need to allow God to do his work so that he can accomplish what he desires in our life. And then 
when those troubled times come, man, we're prepared, we're ready. It's almost like what we've been looking at Sunday mornings uh, for much of this year as we've been looking at the, the sword of the Spirit and its significance, and not the sword of the Spirit, that's one of the pieces, but the armor of God. Uh, we're currently looking at the sword of the Spirit. But as we consider, consider that armor of God, we find in that passage of Ephesians chapter number 6, several different times where we're told to put on, we're told to take, uh, and uh, those types of, of words, man, we're to be proactive in this so that when the battle comes to our door, we're not caught by surprise, but rather uh, we, we are prepared and ready for the battle. Now, is the battle going to be hard? Yes. Is it going to be difficult? Yes. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Yes, it is. But, man, we prepared for it. And that makes it that much easier uh, because of what God has done and is doing in our life and we've allowed him to do it. And so, man, be fervent in spirit. Uh, let's have a proper focus and motivation for living for the Lord. Uh, and then verse number 11, this closely uh, tied with this, serving the Lord. Ah, serving the Lord. You know what? We don't come to church just to be a bump on a log, a bump in a pew, a person in a pew. We are called to serve. And you know what? We don't serve the Lord just in church. We serve the Lord by serving others, the scriptures say, uh, that we love God by loving others. Uh, and so the same would be true, I believe, for our service. Who is it that we're serving? We're serving God. But, but who are we serving on this earth? Others. Uh, and so <clears throat> look to... Look to invest your life uh, in other people. Uh, I, I, find, I find this uh, true in my life. When, when I'm focused on me, uh, man, get down in the dumps, discouraged. Uh, sometimes we experience the, the woe is me attitude or spirit. Uh, that, that's when, when the focus is on me. But when I focus on others, when I focus on serving the Lord, man, my spirit is so much better. Uh, and so let's have that proper view, that proper practice of service and serving others. Don't look to be served. Look to serve. All right, verse number 12. Rejoicing in hope. This is a tremendous reminder for us. You look, you look out at the world, you step outside your front door, you click on the television, you get online, and guess what you're going to see? Things that are going to discourage you. You're going to see people's heartache. Uh, you're going to see, and I'll just say this, people at their worst. You're going to see things uh, that will break your heart. You're going to see, unfortunately, you're going to see evil and wickedness. And so verse number 12 says, rejoicing in hope. There's, there's hope for mankind. There's hope for people. There's hope for our world. That hope rests in Jesus Christ. We're, man, we're having revival services this way. We're looking forward to those services. If you can't be here, pray for those services. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be sharing them, uh, live streaming them, and you can be a part of them. Okay? Now, what's, what's one of the significances and purposes of this? Man, it's a refocusing of ourselves uh, and reminding ourselves of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Uh, and my prayer is that that hope will change us uh, and cause us to live different, to live motivated, uh, to uh, have a burden for the lost. That's what that the, the that sheet we passed out a couple weeks ago. I hope you've been praying through that and uh, uh, specifically about yourself, about our church. But you know what? There's, there's hope for America today. There's hope for our churches today. There's hope for you today. That hope is Jesus Christ. And that's why we need revival, because we desire that hope. Listen, could Jesus come back today? He sure could. Could Jesus come back a thousand years from today? He sure could. I am praying that until the Lord tarries his coming, 
that there will be revival in America and in our world today. Uh, and I believe that there are many people that God desires to be saved. I believe there are many people that God desires to continue to use and still use to accomplish his work. There's hope. Yeah, it's, it's, it's dark at times, but there's always hope. There's always hope for revival. Now, where will that revival begin in your heart and in mine? Let's continue. Patient in tribulation. Reality of this life is tribulation. And some of you have gone through that. Some of the tribulation you've experienced is maybe loss of a loved one. Some of the tribulation you've experienced might be, might be your health. Uh, some of the tribulation you experience, hey, it might be a financial thing. It might be a relationship issue. <clears throat> uh, there's a myriad of ways in which tribulation comes in our life. I think of Job. Uh, you consider the tribulation that, that that took place in Job's life with his with his finances, with his family, and yet he was patient. He was steadfast he was faithful and that's that's god's calling for believers for us today for us to be patient in tribulation you know here's what we often pray and i don't think there's anything wrong with it uh, when tribulation comes to our door trial comes to our door what do we pray we pray that god will end the tribulation right and that's good. I, I, that's what I would pray too. Uh, the, and, and that's what I have prayed as I've gone through my trials, my difficulties, that God would end the tribulation in my life, the difficulty in my life. But at the same time, we need to be praying that God will continue to grow us, that God will continue to use us even in our most difficult of days. And so let's have a proper mindset when tribulation comes to our life. That mindset of focus on God, focus on the Lord. I've been reading with the kids. We've started reading and we take a little bit of time during the school day. Uh, Fox, Fox's Book of Martyrs. Uh, if, you've not, are, if you are not familiar with the book, you, need, you should pick it up. Uh, and you probably get, I think, get on Amazon, Christian bookstores, whatever. It's a very popular book. And what Fox's Book of Martyrs is that it goes through history, sharing the story of those that have lost their life. And we we've just started it, and uh, and we're looking at the ten persecutions in the Roman Empire. Uh, and man, there's been some horrific things that uh, that uh, we've read. Uh, and the mistreatment of God's people. Um, I'll, I'll share. I'll share two with you, and uh, share this with the kids as we've read it during the first uh, uh, persecution. We could say trial, tribulation. Uh, Nero was the leader of Rome, uh, and what he would do is he would have people put a wax. He would have shirts made of wax, and they would put it on. Uh, and then he would shove uh, shove these people onto a pike and stand them in his garden and light them on fire and they would illuminate his garden. Uh, he would have uh, Christians sewn into animals, into animal skins, and then release wild dogs and beasts on them for them to be ripped and torn apart. And you know what, and this isn't true of everybody, but of all of those people uh, that, that we've read about so far, the thousands, uh, to see their commitment to the Lord in the face of persecution, to read about it, oh, it's incredible. And, 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 and what do we have in this life Okay, we're, we, you look at this next thought, continuing incident of prayer. 
oh, the, the, the pastor offended me. Uh, the pastor said something. I'm done with God. Or, or I'm done with the pastor. I'm done with the church. And, uh, and those types of things. Uh, bec because uh, the pastor said something that offended me. It seems like every time I come to church, the pastor's talking to me. It's, it seems like he's preaching at me. You know what it could be? <laughs> it could be the Holy Spirit working and you're denying the Holy Spirit. Okay, and I, and I get it. Pastor's not perfect. And sometimes pastors say things and I say things. And sometimes pastors do things and I do things that are, that are not right. They're not perfect, just like nobody else is perfect. We, we read about church history and, and the persecution of Christians, and it's happening even in our world today, and how quickly and how easily we, we get offended at things and we drop Christianity as a whole. We turn our back on the Lord. We turn our back on the church uh, and, uh, and, and the pastor and, and so on. Man, there are... I'm not discounting the hurt that's experienced sometimes. But, man, are, are God's greater than that hurt? And, man, relationships might not be able to be restored, but people should be forgiven. That's, that's, that's the only way that I think that we're going to experience a, a revival oftentimes. Is, man, there's got to be that willingness to forgive as well. So let, let me close with this. I've kind of rambled a little bit, but it says continuing, continuing instant in prayer. Okay. This carries along with it. Maybe that same thought of, of patient a little bit, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Hey, don't stop praying. Be persistent in your prayer life. The, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, the scriptures say. So let's 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 be uh, 1 Corinthians 15 tells us, therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast. I think we can apply that to prayer. Unmovable apply that to prayer. Steadfast and always abounding in the work of the Lord. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58 uh, and that speaking of man, how we're to live, a part of living for Jesus Christ is our prayer life. So let's continue instant in prayer. Uh, let's, let's be a people that are committed to praying. Uh, let's be a people that, uh, that recognize the power of prayer. I, I, we gave out that handout two weeks ago. Uh, ha, have you spent some time praying over it? I, we, I challenge you to pray over it every day. And I, I understand maybe you can't get through the whole thing every day. But have you spent some time in prayer praying for your heart, your life, that it would be dramatically changed during this revival? And then are you praying that our church, which I believe is a great church, a tremendous church with uh, tremendously godly people that are willing to serve and sacrifice, are you praying for revival in our church? Because you know what? It's not... It's not about our service. It's not about our sacrifice. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. And, and revivals are refocusing on, on who Jesus is. We get so caught up sometimes in serving, we forget Jesus. Let's continue in sin and prayer. I believe that God... It's going to do something great in our midst. I believe he wants to. And let's come along for the ride. Let's do our part. Let's be prayed up. Let's be prepared. Let's be ready for God to do something great. All right, we're going to end with that this morning. Once again, I apologize. We're, we're a little bit late getting on today. Uh, but hopefully it doesn't throw your schedule off too much. Uh, we had some, some setup had to do here to, uh, to get ready, uh, and, and, but we made it. Uh, and good to have you on. And, man, we are 
running way past time here, almost 20 minutes today. I know I don't t- normally take that long, so I apologize for that as well. Uh, Karen, good morning to you. Thank you so much for hosting that prayer meeting last night. Such a blessing and encouragement, uh, and, and so thank you for that. Jan, good morning to you as well. I trust that you'll have a great day. David and Claudia, good morning to you both. Have a wonderful weekend. Ingrid, uh, glad that you were able to watch today and beyond. Good morning to you. Love you. Have a great day. Uh, Becky, good morning to you as well. Uh, and have a great day. Charlie and Marsha, good morning to you both. Uh, hope you guys are both doing well. Uh, Perry, good morning to you. It's good to see you at that prayer meeting last night as well. Paula uh, Hill, good morning. I, I hope that you'll have an awesome day today. Uh, and Karen, I echo uh, that second comment by you praying for uh, the revival services that God will will work in our hearts and that we will le- allow God to work in our hearts. Dennis and Geraldine, good morning to you both as well. Brian and Sydney, good to have you guys on. Hope that you guys have a great day. No matter where you're watching, how you're watching, when you're watching, uh, Lord bless you all. Hope to see you all this weekend. If you can make it for those revival services, be sure and be here. I guarantee you this, you won't regret coming, but you will probably regret not coming. Uh, I'm sorry, regret not coming. You'll probably regret not coming. Yeah, that's right. Wow, I have struggled here this morning. Pray for me, will you? And have a good day, everybody. Hope to see you uh, sometime uh, this weekend, hopefully for those revival services. And be a prayer for them and for that wedding as well. Have a great day, everybody.